hey, just for this one time, I would recommend watching until the end. Um, yeah. My opinion on the movie changes as it goes along. We haven't done a horror movie in a while. Let's do a horror movie. Husera is a 2022 psychological horror movie directed by Michelle Garza Cervera. The movie is about a pregnant woman who disca- discovers that she's under attack from um, some occult forces. I guess Rosemary's Baby, maybe. <laughs> but um, yeah, sounds interesting enough. So yeah, let's watch Husera, the Bone Woman. So I'm wondering if the sounds of the, that are echoing are just like fireworks or celebrations or if there's sounds of like warfare, you know, giving contrast to this religious pilgrimage and violence that's tearing the countryside apart. Second big pyrotechnic stunt I'm watching in a movie today. This and Revenge. Why is there always gotta be sex in the first real <laughs> horror movie? Yeah, so th- my impression is they're trying to get pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> Whoever's composing the score is taking some cues from uh, Clint Mansell. Is it supposed to be a cute baby? Is it supposed to be a scary baby? But perhaps already layering in some anxiety that she has about this prospect. Yo te caché. ¿Qué? ¿Cuál es el cigarro? Sí. It's a very, very small thing, but it's interesting the way they chose to reframe that uh, her workshop because before she found out she was pregnant, it's very structured and front on. We're seeing it from like a like a ninety degree angle, perpendicular to the the direction of the room itself. And then when she's has that moment of discord, when she sees a spider, when we go to to the wider shot, it's at a, like a forty five degree angle. It's suddenly angled and disrupted and fracturous as opposed to um, straight. So I wonder if we're going to establish like a, a language early on of like straight on shots of stability of like kind of continuity and that'll be gradually disrupted by more um, angled shots. Things shot on a bias. Okay. Ya listo, eh? And whatever concern she had about the spider, it's also reflected in the work that she does. The um, weave work that she does for her, for her installation pieces. Felicidades. Ya se te estaba pasando el tren. A lot of repeated images of like um, uh, uh, the uterus. Uh. But um, kind of the image of the turkey being or the chicken being trussed is not trussed. The the chicken being um, de- deboned is similar to the, in the office of the um, gynecologist. The the image of the uterus. La Llorona. And the way her fingers splay is kind of like a spider as well. 
She is pregnant. Hmm. Ladies do be jumping out of windows, though. Was she pregnant as well? I don't want to, like, uh, judge or whatever. I don't want to presume, but she looked like she had a bit of a, um, extended belly. It's all the excitement. Just the pregnancy excitement. I love this quality in these um, Hispanic actors or Latino actors. Uh, it's captured forever for our generation with the uh, still image of, um, of what's her name, of Jenny Ortega in X, the um, specific kind of grimace. Mm. And you see just a little bit in the camera work, establishing a little bit of discord from the shot of Raul. We actually have him front facing and it's a very kind of clean horizontal shot and we s from the shot of um Valeria is at an angle again introducing that little bit of um tension that little bit of unbalance I didn't never really realize that that um that Rorschach looks like a baby boom 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 <laughs> scary, scary, scary. Yeah, it definitely seems like she has some, some anxiety over uh, childbirth about becoming a mother. That's the question, isn't it? And in the middle is the spider. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really think she thought through that design. I wonder what the significance is of the green, of the uh, like tealish color she has assigned to her to her baby. It's a girl. It's una niña. Who could have guessed? Yeah, it looks like a spider. <laughs> they didn't really need to add that effect in. I think that's too much. So I guess, I don't know, 
I wonder. We'll, we'll see where it goes, but I, I think what's being interpreted here is like the the pain of transformation of having the baby transform her body. Yeah, and you see how the camera's getting progressively unstable. It used to be like on a tripod, and now it's a little bit handheldy, and we're getting like canted angles. I'd love to get into some Mexican hit, uh, punk music. Is she gay? Or I mean bi, but... Okay, that'd be an interesting... I don't really know where that's going. There's a lot of, like, threads that I'm pulling at, tr wondering what is, like, narratively going to be the root cause of her anxiety because there's different things that's going on like anxiety is related to her family anxiety is relating to her sexuality anxiety is related to her relationship with women um and then there's this also this thread that i'm not sure if it's there or not of the um like the conflict like street violence that may have affected her family that may have uh, killed her brother la primera universitaria de la familia I mean, I like their vibe together, but she's only there because she has a woman haunting her. So, I don't know. That kind of complicates things. Nice, nice. So rarely get to see pregnant guest scenes in the movies. I was just saying in the first in the first 15 minutes of this movie that I wanted to see a third act guest scene. I don't think this is third act, but second act is an improvement. Especially when she's pregnant. Maybe part of the issue is also that she hasn't been, like, orgasming with her husband. Like, she's... Because she has this child in her, she's, like, unable to embrace her own femininity. She's seen as, like, a, a vessel for the child. I, I, like, that that was something that I was grappling with and trying to conceptualize what exactly a bone woman is. Like, part of my theory was that, like, a bone woman is, like, a, a, a carapace. It's the structure that's holding something else. So that might be, that might be something as well. And this baby is seen as, like, a capitulation, a loss of agency. Uh, just, like, she lacks, she's, it's a thing that's domesticating her. It's locking her to her husband, locking her to her family. So I think, like, it's like the movie's attempting to layer different metaphors and see how they like um, how they complement each other but I'm just not exactly sure at this point what the connections are <laughs> it's Antichrist She's not good with kids. I mean, that's fine or whatever. She's just not good with kids. You gotta stop, girl. It's a little too much. Yeah, like I said, it's too much. It's open in her face. Yeah, and progressively the structure is disintegrating, we're doing more handheld shots. Everything's a little bit more loose and organic, but it's feeling more chaotic. This is really none of your business. Oh 
I don't really know so far if this movie exactly has a lot going for it. It seems to be layering elements, but um, layering disparate elements. From my point of view, I can't really tell what thematic cohesion there is in the story right now. Are we mad at Valeria for being a fake? She can't really express herself. And she's really not this, like, affluent girl. But she's really just a poor. And the stress of that experience is making her become the bone woman. I'm also wondering where Raul is, like, mentally here. Because it's one of those difficult kind of narratives where it's like, uh, we're seeing so much from Valeria's point of view, we don't actually know if it's uh, what parts are, like, colored by her interpretation or not. Ciudad, what? Uh, but, like, if we are to take it at face value that the way Raul is reacting to her condition is um, how he's genuinely reacting, then Raul is like, I don't know, is acting a little not the most, uh, I don't know, helpful with his pregnant wife, his first time pregnant wife. It's one of those kind of like, like I understand it's supposed to be like an isolating experience that we're presenting, but I don't know. It's one of those horror movie things where it's at the expense of feeling like this character lives in the real world with characters that are her actual family and her actual like friends and how they would actually uh, try and support her or try and understand what's happening to her. It's okay, your husband's a beard anyway. He's a beard for you, you're a beard for him, certainly. Like, that's crazy that her husband would suggest that at the first bite, at the first instance. But, like, if this is an issue that she's going through that is a result of her, like, gender, like, I feel like not just her aunt, but her mother, I don't know, other woman would, would identify what her condition is like and try and support her through it. I, I don't want to go totally in this direction, but right now, it kind of feels like a pick-me horror movie. Why would he have that picture, that C-section picture up in his office? This is the sort of thing that makes me question the reality of this movie, but it makes me question, like, how much we're supposed to see as being from Valeria's point of view and what we're supposed to see as the real world. Because in no real world would that would that gynecologist, would that OBGYN, have that picture of a cesarean just up in his office. That's one gay husband. A ver cómo te va con tu pinche cuentito tópico de vida en la montaña, güey. Vete a la mierda. Anda. Like, it's just that characters are, like, a bit unnaturally not on her side. To the degree where you're like, was she ever friends with any of these people? And I get, like, that's... The story being conveyed through that is that she's turned her back on the life that's actually hers and elected to start a life with all these fakes and these phonies. But, like, who are the identifiable phonies in this narrative, then? It's her husband and her family. 
like that's kind of like a hard narrative for me to process because like her family's if, if she's a fake her family is like poor with her they're not the same kind of like bourgeois that her husband's been established as hey we get a little bit of a jacob's ladder wasn't expecting that Yeah, I guess green is a color associated with her child. And it's, you know, it's a color traditionally associated with sickness as well. Solo van a hacer unas puntaditas. Yeah, so this is the part of the kind of like surreality of the film that all of the male surgeons, they ran away with the baby and she was only attended by the one nurse uh so like the movie is like meant to be a bit subjective in his viewpoint but i it's it's just harder for me to tell where this that subjectivity comes in because it, it just like makes you question all aspects of the film what's meant to be interpreted as literal or not like the way that her husband reacts to her, the way that her family reacts to her, uh, it's all colored by whether or not this is her interpretation of events. And if that's the case, like, um, that's fine, I suppose. But um, I would prefer her to be a more interesting or dynamic character in that case. If I'm meant to be from her point of view this entire time, then... Uh, I really need to be interested in her point of view. And I'm not saying that, like, she has to be, like, an action hero or anything. She has to be, like, really brave or really stunning or really impressive in some way. But in, to draw a comparison, like, to this and uh, the Headless Woman, like, the Headless Woman is not as subjective, but um, it does present things from a restrictive point of view of its protagonist and uh we really have to like understand the world from through her perspective and the world like unfolds itself it's like discovered newly by understanding her perspective progressively i mean i'd be cool with this ending with her like killing her baby i don't necessarily see a another way another ending that could be justified like she learns to accept her child she learns to accept to be a mother I think that'd be an okay ending for this but I don't think that's like really the story that this movie is telling she's gotta see that baby as a curse as a nightmare as a monster something that she can't even attach to her body anymore she can't feed it through her breasts she has to offer a middle um, intermediate through the bottle that's a nice image as well though of the baby in the crib looking like a, uh, a spider in a web just turning into the bone woman bone saw three minutes of playtime She's turning into Randy Savage. Where is Raul? Are those there are multiple arms in there? Is that what I'm seeing? I like this playing out in this restricted view where we can't see what she's doing. Yeah, women do be going through it though. Coming to term, delivering, aftercare for the baby. A lot of stuff going on. What happened? <laughs> You didn't put that baby in a refrigerator, in a microwave, did you? 
Oh, I, I something that I didn't pick up on that has been a repeated image, obviously, has been the uh, open window. Yeah, I should have uh, highlighted that a bit more, because obviously she's had repeated like dreams or nightmares where she's left a window open, she's seen a woman jump out a window, she watched a uh, television program or a movie where um, a woman is trying to force her child to uh, jump out a window. That baby's in the walls now. The baby's turned into uh, the boy. She's not crazy. She doesn't hate her kid or anything. She's very, 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 very tired. See, this is one of those things where I'm like, if the if the experience is alienation from having a child, um. Like the actual physical experience of having a child and uh, going through labor and giving birth and caring for the child afterwards, then that's something I think like the other women in this movie should be able to identify with. Like her aunt does to a certain degree, but I think like her mother should as well, and her mother in law and her sister. So, so I think that's like a different story being expressed than the story of her feeling like. Um, she's delivering a baby that she doesn't want, um, that she's, uh, being made like a, um, a vessel that she, her agency is being taken away. Like, it's a different story from her, um, being, feeling like she's a fake, that she, she's has, she's had to, um, go to term with this child in order to keep up the facade of being a functional member of the society, of being with Raul, of living this bourgeois life. She's gonna need a bone saw! They're gonna choke on a bone. Me pueden ayudar? And again, um, tying it up, knotting it up in threads to try and trap the, or undo the curse is again creating the imagery of um, webbing. She's gonna have to spill blood for her, baby? I'm not sure I'm. I totally understand the connection. She needs her body to function again. She needs to have her period again. Her body has to be her own again and not her child's. kind of understand that. That was also interesting, when her head was dipped into the water, she made the same kind of face as the, um, the, the bone woman. I wonder what happened to her brother. Like, if we take the ending of the movie as being, like, a way of, like, certifying or validating a specific relationship, um... Like, obviously, she's... She's validating the relationship she has with her... with her... with her daughter. But, like, what other relationship is that pointing to? Is it her relationship with herself? Her relationship with her family? Her relationship to her gender? Because in my mind, to a certain degree, the Bone Woman is supposed to help her. Like, there's some issue that she has that the, the Bone Woman is bringing to the surface. I'm just not, like, entirely sure. 
maybe it's I don't know because she likes let's go of the blanket yeah it's her because it's interesting I don't know idea of like bodily autonomy like it, the metaphor of the bone woman is like is it like as I said like what is the relationship that's being validated or certified it's not her relationship with her child it's her relationship with herself so maybe she has to give up the baby to reassert her um autonomy over her own body because I, I was getting very very conflicted about that about who, who this character is when she, her body was being broken apart for the sake of her child because uh, while that's like the regular form of narrative I don't think of it as being like um, true to this character's story that what she needed to learn in the end was um, the sacrifices that a woman has to make to be become a mother. I kind of see this more as a story of her trying to rediscover her own autonomy. And sometimes that means facing a terrible taboo. Like recognizing that you don't really want to have a child. Give it up for adoption. Yeah, okay. This ending makes more sense to me. This makes a lot, 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 lot more sense to me. Okay, I think I understand this narrative a lot better now. Okay. That's fine, then. I really get that. That's great. I was afraid, like, this movie was heading in a direction where it was going to deny what it's about, it's about. And with this, I'm, like, totally fine with this movie. This movie is entirely about what it says it's about. It's a woman who has to confront that she doesn't want to be a mother earlier rather than later. I'm totally fine with that. That's awesome. Okay, I totally get that. That's great. Uh, yeah. That's, that's totally fine. I totally, totally get that. Um, great. Great. Amazing. Uh, yeah. Uh, points to the um, axiom that you should try and stay with a movie till the end because of I while you think you may understand the themes of it in the beginning uh, who knows who knows uh, I I enjoyed this I think that um, obviously like there are comparisons that could be made and I think it suffers a little bit in those comparisons like I don't know nothing's ever gonna be rosemary's baby nothing's ever going to quite be the Babadook or um, or Antichrist is certainly a movie that this could be compared to. Uh, but specifically, I think, I don't know, this is a good movie. I just want to state that outright, and that should be your main takeaway from this, and that you should check out this movie. I think a movie I think that was, m that I just happened to watch this year, that was like powerfully exploring the same themes, and in a really, really incisive way, um, not to say that this movie isn't incisive and like um, radical or departure a departure from the norm in its own ways, but a movie that I think is really really challenging is uh, Saint Omar from from 2022. That's I, I hope I have a video out on it, but that movie is just like well, it's not like a hor it's not a horror movie. It's not like a metaphorical interpretation of its events, but it's um. It's very different and very, very powerful. But I ended up liking this a lot. Um, I, I was very, very worried that it was falling into the trappings of she needs to learn to be a mother and she needs to learn to love this child because that's just not what this story was saying at all to me. And I was 
like like the bone woman i was contorting myself ridiculously trying to justify that ending cuz cultural compulsion like the compulsion of the norm you think that's where the story is heading that's like the most powerful social instinct is to say that she needs to recognize her um femininity her motherhood her maternal instincts and the movie takes a stance of this movie is not about motherhood this movie is about autonomy um and agency and yeah totally support that Oh, I also understand now why the aunt is the only woman who shares her perspective over the course of this movie. That makes a lot more sense now. Um, I think it could have. I. It's it's just a it, it, it's just a slight point of comparison, but Saint Omar gets away with uh, actually displaying how all women have this experience and relate to it, even if they don't follow the same follow the same course of action. But uh, narratively, I do understand why. Uh, her aunt is the only one who takes this perspective because every other character in this movie is either a mother or hasn't had children. That makes a lot of sense. Cool movie. Uh, yeah, that was Lucera. I think you should check it out. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to click the like button and subscribe for more old, obscure, and art house films. And until next time, keep watching good movies.